Hi, let's go on a walk down what I call Tussock Moth Lane. Consider it to be mid-April in north central Florida. As I'm walking down the sidewalk, I see these dark pellets all over the ground beneath the, an oak tree. It sounds like it's been raining, but it's actually a nice clear day. I look up at the tree above me. Some of the branches look like the leaves have been stripped off, but others look pretty good. Looking across the street, at least two trees look nearly defoliated compared to some of the other trees that are next to them. Hmm, I wonder what's going on. Let's go get a better look. On the leaves, there are a lot of hairy caterpillars. They have two long, thin black tufts of hair near their head, which sort of look like antennae, and another one is at the rear end. There are four short, dense, light-colored tufts of hair along with the caterpillar's back. The head is red, and the body can be either gray or more yellow in color. When the caterpillars have eaten enough leaves and are ready to transform or pupate into moths, they start wandering around. Actually, they're looking for more protected areas in which to spin their cocoons and pupate inside. As cool looking and as fuzzy as the caterpillars are, they and their pale cocoons are not fun to play with. Some of the hairs from the caterpillars or cocoons can cause an allergic reaction in some sensitive people. Of course, for example, I accidentally brushed against one of the cocoons uh, while trying to get my recycling can back into my uh, garage. And I immediately broke out in an itchy and bumpy rash. I quickly put an over-the-counter 1% hydrocortisone cream on the affected skin, but it did not stop any of the discomfort. So I went to plan B. I had to press clear packing tape or scotch tape onto the skin to remove the fine hairs that were stuck in it, but I couldn't see, and then applied my prescription strength steroid cream, which I have on hand for such occasions. Overnight, the area still swelled up a bunch, and the whole rash finally disappeared after over a week. Usually, only one generation of the most common tussock moth species, or Gia detrita, occurs per year in north central Florida. So if you know where to find the cocoons and you destroy these pupae inside, you can help to reduce an outbreak the following year. A lot of cocoons can be on the trees that the caterpillars grew up on, but they do also occur in some rather interesting places too. This plant was beneath an infested oak tree, and you can see how the caterpillars love to pupate on that pot. But keep in mind when cleaning off those cocoons and pupae, keep your skin covered so the hairs don't bother you. It is amazing where you can find the cocoons, even on fences and signposts. Despite how many cocoons there are, about half of the pupae will not survive, just because they will be attacked by parasitic flies or wasps. Yay, biological control! Pupation only lasts a week or so, and then the adults emerge to mate and lay eggs. The odd thing about tussock moth females is that they are wingless, they stay on their cocoons, and they lay eggs on top of the co cocoons. It is a bonus if you can get rid of the eggs at the same time that, of course, you're scraping off those cocoons. The males do have wings, and they fly to fi find the females. Thankfully, handling the adults does not seem to cause much of an allergic reaction. This video was scripted and narrated by Eileen Buss and photos were contributed by both Eileen and Lyle Buss from the Entomology and Nematology Department at the University of Florida.